In this video, legendary puppeteer Tim Rose from Labyrinth, The Dark Crystal, Star Wars as Admiral Akbar, Salacious B. Crumb no less, answers your questions from a long time ago. Specifically, one year ago, you might remember I did a pretty long interview with Tim and at the end, we didn't have much time so I couldn't ask all of the questions but I did put some of the questions that you asked me to put to him and he answered them. So the reason it's taken a year is that I actually forgot that I did this. It was only during a recent spring clean of my hard drives that I stumbled across it and thought, well, I may as well put it out there for you. Better late than never and all that. Now, if you did see the main interview with Tim, you'll remember maybe that it wasn't the best line. So it's not, it's not technically the best thing I've put out before, but I think the questions were good. His answers are interesting. One of the questions is now a bit out of date about the new Dark Crystal Netflix series, but I still have left it in the edit for you anyway, because I think his response is pretty good. So a year later, here we go. Tim Rose answers your questions. Right, here's a couple of questions. Um, Raphael Brun would like to know how has being part of Star Wars changed your life? Because of the conventions, it certainly aided my declining years. <laughs> um, being part of it helps. I, I work on both sides of the camera. I'm a performer and also an animatronics designer. So it certainly helped my standing in our community of a man who knew what he was talking about when it came to animatronics. Fake Skylar has asked, what did the mask smell like? Let's go with Akbar here. What did that mask <laughs> smell like? I'm sorry, that's uh, personal. <laughs> you basically inside, you, your body gets drenched in a layer of sweat from head to toe. Nice. So you go to about 100. 102 degrees probably if you know if they stuck a thermometer in your mouth you'd be running a fever the whole time you're in the suit and as long as you're sweating you're okay but if you stop sweating you're in big trouble because that means your body is no longer balancing itself you've run out of fluids so that does create smell the, the secret is vodka okay <laughs> well what we do with all the suits is at the end of each day you take cheap vodka and water in misters and you spray the entire suit with it and it acts as an antibacterial. Oh, one of the, you don't drink the vodka. It's a waste of vodka. Nicest antibacterials that then doesn't start putting its own perfume smell or whatever, you know, because if you use Lysol or one of these, they end up with their own smell that chokes you to death in the suit. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the cheap vodka and water is the way to not smell too much. HG Wells 1899 asks, does Tim Rose have any inside goss on the new Dark Crystal show? <laughs> no, I wasn't asked to be a part of the new Dark Crystal show. And um, I was quite happy about that because I have extremely fond memories of the original Dark Crystal. We all worked very hard to create that. And um, I wanted my memories to be left. Hello, me again. Just a note about this next question now. You know, I mentioned earlier that there was a question out of date by now. But also, I think either one of your names is now out of date by now, or my brain is probably out of date by now. Because I read this next question as being from Jamming Jedi, and I remember Jamming Jedi. However, when I went back to get the comment to put it up on screen, just yesterday in fact, it was Captain Britain. I know Captain Britain. Captain Britain is a regular on the comments. Uh, and Jamming Jedi, now I think about it, has vanished. So I'm hoping that Jamming Jedi has become Captain Britain rather than I just haven't got the ability to read. Jamming Jedi has asked, uh, would like to know how you got into character for roles like Akbar that at the time had very little substance. One of the other things about these characters is they can't just be anybody. You very quickly, because you're performing to a monitor and watching it back, the character, because of the way it's sculpted, because of the way it moves, whatever, there, there's a range of believability, things that you can do with it that you believe and there's other things you do that you don't believe at all. So you do have to you do have to listen to them and they tell you what to do. 
if that sounds out there and dee 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 dee. But it, it's a, it's just because you you're working on in a medium, people their brains have a whole saved up store of what they see and what they expect to hear when they see that. And so you tap it as a puppeteer, you you tap into that store of human knowledge and you stay true and believable to that knowledge so that people suspend their disbelief and come along with you. Final one, Aunt Fezuvi. She would like to know um, what your favourite interaction with fandom has been thus far. How much enjoyment they get out of it. I mean, I reached my middle age and I thought, what the heck have I been doing? Why didn't I listen to my mother and become an architect? You know, CGI is taking over the day job. Am I even going to make it to retirement without ending up living in the car in the street, whatever? And it's been by meeting the people at the conventions. And time after time, what they say to me was, you were my childhood. <laughs> you know, not me, but the, the Dark Crystal Labyrinth, the Star Wars, all, all these projects that we worked on when I was just trying to pay the mortgage and raise the kids, you know, were the things that were really stimulating the the imaginations and creative juices of these next generations coming after us. And it's been nice to know that I, though I may not be rich, I wasn't wasting my time. <laughs> well, that might um, actually help us squeeze in one extra question from Mookenstein 2.0 because uh, he asks, when did you realize your characters had become fan favorites? I guess when the fans tell you. Yeah, my cousin Lisa, she's, I, I don't really go on the internet but she sort of keeps up with it all and, and she sends me links and says, oh, look, they've done this whole thing with Star Wars characters, Akbar's number seven and, you know, all that sort of thing. I, <laughs> I get it secondhand from her because she's a big fan. So. Yeah. What are your real-life trap-detecting skills like? You know, for example, when your partner says, we don't need to worry about Valentine's Day this year, do you believe that <laughs> oh like i don't want a christmas present exactly life won't be worth living if i listen and believe to these things yes <laughs> you know a trap when you see one i do it's a trap so thank you for watching and thank you for submitting your questions and sorry if i didn't get to ask your one like i said there were some time constraints as we did do a pretty lengthy interview before we got to subscriber questions uh, and i will be doing another one of these with mike quinn you might remember Mike Quinn, the interview I did with him. I also put some of your questions to him, it turns out, a good year ago. So I'll be putting that one out soon as well. But for now, please give this video a like. If you haven't already, subscribe, ring my notification bell, ring my bell so you don't miss a thing. And I will see you soon. You can go now. <laughs> <laughs>